As you may know, the stock market was down almost 20% in 2022, but guess what? That didn't actually stop politicians from still doing pretty good. On average, congressional Democrats beat the market by about 16.4% on average. Republicans did even better on average, beating the market by about 18.6%. So you know what? Politicians apparently are pretty good at investing. You know, people are like always saying, hey, there's an ETF for that. Okay, well, I'm trying to make it a thing, all right? It's like, do you want to invest in ingredients that have to do with your breakfast foods? There's an ETF that invests in that. Or like, hey, I want to invest in meme stocks. Actually, there is an ETF that invests in that. What if I want to bet against every single stock that a certain CNBC commentator says that he likes? Actually, there's an ETF that invests in that. Or what if I want to invest and benefit from the greed and corruption of politicians? No, 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 no. There's not an ETF that invests in that. But actually, there is. Welcome to the Unusual Whales Democratic ETF by Subversive ETFs. And also, the Cruise Unusual Whales Republican subversive ETF. And so Unusual Whales is actually very popular on Twitter. 1.1 million followers. And they try to bring focus and attention to people like politicians who trade stocks. And so Unusual Whales, they see themselves as a fighter of transparency, let's say. They've been showing and tracking the moves, the market moves, the purchases, the buys of politicians in Congress. And you may be asking yourself, how would Unusual Whales even track the stock purchases of people that serve in Congress. Well, all goes back to the year 2012 when the Stock Act was passed or the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act. So according to Unusual Whales, the Stock Act was passed in response to concerns about insider trading by none other than members of Congress. And what the Stock Act actually did was it amended the financial disclosure laws to require members of Congress and certain other federal officials to disclose their financial transactions within 45 days, rather than the previous rules, which was that they had to disclose it annually. And so the idea here, of course, is to have more transparency and to make sure that if elected officials perhaps serving on a defense committee and they see a war that's about to break out, they don't go out and buy stocks that are going to profit from that war because maybe they'll be put up to public scrutiny, except the fact is that they're still doing it anyway, unfortunately. You can actually see here the returns on defense stocks in 2022. These are the actual returns of some members of Congress that are investing in stocks that are inside the defense industry. Blue are Democrats, red are Republicans. Both sides are doing this and you're seeing some pretty good gains here in a time when the market was down almost 20%. Now, Unusual Whales is tracking Congress's activities here two different ways. There's what we would call the average congressional stock return. So you just say, what are the average of all these peoples if they bought the stock and then they held it? Of course, selling the ones along the way that were disclosed and then comparing that to what the actual S&P 500 did during the year. And so here you could see the S&P was down negative 18.2%. Republicans were actually up 0.38% during the year of 2022. And then Democrats were only down negative 1.76%. Again, compared to a market that's down 18 point something percent. At the end of the day, they killed the market. Now this is on average, right? So they did another way. They tracked this another way. They took all of the buys and sells of all the politicians and they said, okay, let's go ahead and track that against the S&P 500. Well, if instead of buying, for example, stock in Lockheed Martin, right? Let's say you bought stock in Lockheed Martin on January 1st and you sold it in February 20th, that's a trade, right? What if instead of buying Lockheed Martin, you went and you bought the S&P 500 or SPY, the SPY ETF. If you bought the SPY ETF and you sold that, how much more did you make or lose by buying the S&P 500 versus Lockheed Martin? And that's what we're looking at right here. So when they tracked the trades, if they had traded instead S&P 500, their trades were way better than if they had bought the market. So if they had just traded the S&P 500 with all these trades that they made, they'd be up only 0.02%. But Republicans actually were up 4.64% and Democrats were actually up 3.76%. So this is telling you they're actually really good traders. And as you probably know, I'm sure a lot of people in Congress, they're not really traders, right? Unusual Whales actually breaks this down a little further. They have the Senate and they have the House. So happened with the Senate, okay, 0.09% would have been if you had traded only the S&P 500. Well, the Senate made 5.83% for Republicans. And Senate Democrats freaking killed it. They knocked it out of the park with a 16.28% return. I mean, if I'm a hedge fund, I'm gonna go try to get a bunch of senators to work my hedge fund, right? These men and these women are doing a good job investing. They're good traders. If you take a look at the house, S&P 500 trades would have been up 0.02%. The house, 4.54 for Republicans, 3.19% for Democrats. Again, beating the S&P 500 trades if they had traded the S&P 500 instead of the individual stocks that they had traded. Unusual Whales breaks this down really well. So there's so much data on this. I mean, we don't have to go through this whole thing, but just for example, look at the house. Mike Kelly had a 239% rate of return compared to the S&P 500, 
Roger Marshall in the Senate had 106% rate of return. These two were the leaders. So again, they're doing something right. I mean, they're doing something that's making them money for sure. Here we have the top stocks purchased by Congress with the largest gain since the Russia invasion. This very first stock tell is a nat gas stock. This is probably a play of the fact that Russia supplies a lot of natural gas to Europe. Also, we have stocks like Lockheed Martin here, LMT, obviously a defense contractor, right? They're gonna do well in times of conflict. Here on the left side, we have the top 10 stocks of the House. On the right, we have the top 10 stocks bought by the Senate. House Democrats preferring companies like Disney, Apple, Tesla, Google, and NVIDIA. House Republicans preferring stocks, kind of like ET here, which is actually an energy stock, or like EPAM, that's an engineering services stock. On the right side, you have senators. They got Microsoft, PayPal, Intel. And over here, we can see the top stocks sold. Again, on the left, we have the House. On the right, we have the Senate. So at the end of the day, it's sad that we even have this that exists, but the fact is that it does exist. And the question is, would someone want to invest in something like this? Well, to start, these ETFs are literally brand new. They have about seven trading days behind them. So there's really not a lot of activity that we can take a look and go back and see how these ETFs have performed. So whether or not they're actually going to be good ETFs or not, I'm not sure I would want to invest in something like this already. The way I invest, I'll usually wait until I see some activity in an ETF, maybe at least a year, and see how it's performed. So like here is the Nancy ETF. This is the Democratic ETF. It's down 0.94% since it started trading. Again, it's only a few days worth of trading so far. And then if we take a look at the cruise ETF, it's up about 0.12% so far. And again, it's also only got a few days worth of trading. Which of these ETFs would you go with? I mean, if I was gonna actually do this, I'd probably just buy both of them. I can't see a way to figure out which one's actually gonna do better. I don't know if Democrats or Republicans are better investors, honestly, at the end of the day. I'm sure everyone has their own inherent way of thinking about this. Everyone probably thinks that their party is gonna be the better investor. But at the end of the day, it's probably the people who are sitting on the committees that are going to be the ones that are going to be doing better in this. That's my guess. A few important things that we probably want to know about are the expense ratios. A 0.75% expense ratio for both of these ETFs. It's actually a pretty high expense ratio for an ETF. Over here, we can see the date that this thing was incepted. The inception date was only February 7th of 2023. Of course, it's only been around for you know, a few days, really. This thing's so young, it doesn't even have a distribution yield yet. So if you take a look over here, there's nothing to show. And it only pays distributions annually, so you're not even going to get quarterly distributions for this if it does pay a bunch of dividends. We take a look at the portfolios. The Nancy Democratic Subversive ETF has Microsoft as their number one, Amazon, Apple, Google. We got Salesforce, NVIDIA. We got Disney, CrowdStrike, Philip Morris, and American Express. Cruise ETF, we have Magellan Midstream Partners. That's going to be an energy stock. We have Microsoft. We have ET Energy Transfer. We got Dow. We got... Philip Morris, we got Shell, we got United Therapeutics, we got Accenture, Owl Rock Capital, and Las Vegas Sands Corporation, which of course is a casino. And that's what you're gonna be investing in when you go in one of these two ETFs. Actually, they're pretty different. It seems like the Republican ETF is going to be very heavily more on the energy sector. Right now, I don't even have the amount of assets that are inside this ETF. So, you know, there are just parameters that I usually take a look at to see before I'd even invest in something. There needs to be a certain amount of liquidity. There needs to be a certain amount of assets, right? So I'm waiting for the CTF. I probably wouldn't invest in it any time within the, you know, the next year. But I think it could be something very interesting in the future. And I wouldn't be putting tons of money in it, but you know, maybe a little small speculative position, 3% of a portfolio could be kind of interesting. So let me know what you think about these in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you wanna see a video on some more ETFs, take a look at this video here. Disclaimer here and see you next time.